Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are gonna be talking all about how I use Photoshop's new AI generation tool in my food photography. AI is the topic of the moment. We all know every single software, every service you use now has an AI functionality and photography tools are no exception. AI generation has been a very controversial topic in photography. People certainly have the opinion that it's cheating, you know, it's not real photography. And I don't know how I feel about all of that yet, but I have found a way that I find using this generation tool really useful in my workflow. So for me as a photographer doing test shoots and kind of practicing with different combinations of backdrops and props and trying things out has always been a really big part of my workflow, but it does take a lot of time. And I have found a trick to help cut down on that time. I often will shoot my backdrops and props to together in different combinations to give myself new ideas about how things could go well together or what might work, combinations I haven't thought of before. And it got me thinking, what else could I do? How can I see what kind of food might work with certain props? And that's when I was like, why am I not using AI generation for this? So I gave it a go for a shoot and it was like mind blowing. Yes, it wasn't a perfect image that I was gonna shoot, but it gave me enough of an idea of what was gonna work in terms of color and composition that I was like, I need to be doing this and you need to be doing this. So what I've done today is I've taken three very different images of different backdrops and props that I have and I've given them a really quick edit in Capture One, like nothing fancy. We're gonna hop over into Photoshop and look at how we can get some ideas for a shoot. Okay, so for our first image, I've set up this quite light and bright scene. Let's open this with Photoshop. For the AI generation tool, all you need is one of the selection tools. I'm just gonna be using the basic lasso tool. So first of all, let's make a new layer and we'll call this main bowl. And I think let's start with a breakfast scene. So I'm just gonna draw a really rough area in this bowl. And then we're gonna click on the magic generative fill button. So if I just put generate with food, okay, fine. We press generate, let's see what it comes up with. Okay, we've got some curry that looks like it's sitting in some water. You know, okay. So we get a few variation options in here and that's okay, but that's not really what we're going for for a breakfast scene. So let's be much more specific. So let's say yogurt topped with muesli and berries. And then let's generate that and see what it does. So here we go. This is looking much more realistic now. So we've got a few options here. We've got a blue and yellow, and then we've got this one with some raspberries. Thinking about the vibes of this scene, maybe keeping it a bit more neutral. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. And then let's think about what do we want to put in the small bowl? So let's do small bowl, maybe just some extra berries. And let's imagine they're sort of in a pile. So I'm going to draw selection a little bit above so that it can um, fill up that space. So it's only gonna put content inside the space you select. So make sure that you select a big enough space. So let's just say blueberries and see what happens. Okay, so it's also put them on yogurt. But I mean, sure, okay. But what we could do, so I like this one is let's make it a bit bigger and then let's get rid of that edge. So the, it actually puts it in as a layer mask. So I'm just gonna go ahead, select the layer mask and a black paintbrush. Let's, and I'm not gonna be too precise with this because like I said, this is just for idea generation. This is not about actually creating a final image. So I'm just gonna have a rough. Okay, so I've got an idea of what some blueberries there could look like. So let's go ahead and add maybe a couple more berries. Let's add a few like this. And let's say blueberries again and see if we can just have a few sort of berries scattered around. Might be a nice way to see what, what could work. 
Okay, we have a blueberry, so we can choose different blueberries. I think we'll stick with this one. I think we'll go for that one. So we've added a few berries. Maybe I want to add a spoon into the bowl and see what that looks like. Maybe from this angle. So I might sort of draw this kind of shape and I'm going to write spoon dipping into bowl of yogurt and see, see what that does. Okay, it's been very, very literal. As you can see, it is not always the perfect tool. Let's try something else. Let's just try spoon resting on bowl. See if that's any better. Sometimes it's just a case of getting the instructions right. That's half the battle. Okay, we've still got some pretty wonky spoons. So let's just go even more vague and just say spoon handle. Spoon handle. You know, we've got three different kinds of spoons here. We can see we've got something very vintage. We've got something very modern and thin and something kind of in between. So I think I'm going to stick with the um, this one. And now let's add some orange juice to the glass. Let's see if we can do that. So I'm going to try and trace around the glass, leave a line, and then let's write orange juice. Okay, I think this one is probably the best. And now I'm sort of thinking maybe this second glass is a bit too much. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. So I'm just going to draw around it. So I've selected my glass and now I'm going to do content aware fill. And I'm going to do a custom sampling selection. And I'm just going to go on the backdrop all around. So we'll say, OK, glass be gone. Let's come back over here and do a new selection. And let's maybe have a cup of coffee and say cappuccino. Why not? It's the morning. It's brunch. That is not cappuccino. Just saying. Let's try latte. Worst comes to worst, we'll just say cup of coffee. It is not the perfect tool, but as you can see, what I have now is that that is a glass of milk. Oh, I guess latte is milk. Yeah. All right. I'll give you that one. Let's just do cup of coffee. As you can see, what I have now is I spent maybe five minutes taking some images of my props. And now I've got a full breakfast scene to kind of see what kind of things I could put in, what kind of um, things look good. What is going on with this cup of coffee? How does it not know what a cup of coffee looks like? Coffee? <laughs> really doesn't want to give me a cup of coffee. So I guess, I guess we're just going to leave it. Just imagine there could be a cup of coffee there. It's not always foolproof, but what we've gone from is a completely blank scene to a breakfast scene where now I'm thinking in my mind like, oh, okay, these color combinations kind of work. These props work. I could add a spoon in this direction. It just gives me the chance to play around with things much more quickly than literally going on set, having to bring in some food and get everything dirty and get all my props out. Of course, there is still absolutely a place for that. But if I've got a large volume of images to plan and I just want some quick ideas and brainstorms, this tool is perfect. So let's have a look at a, another example. So these ones are a little bit more difficult, but we're going to give it a go anyway. So let's go ahead and make a new layer and then fill this glass with some kind of drink. So what kind of cocktail should we make? I mean, a Negroni is my favorite drink. And as you can see, I'm not being precise because this is not the point of this. So don't come at me for my poor selections. I can do better selections than this. OK, so I'm going to put Negroni and see what it comes up with. If that's no good, I might try red liquid, something like that. That is an apple. <laughs> cool. All right, let's just try red liquid in glass <laughs> and see if that just gives us some kind of red liquid to work with. OK, that's more like it. I still don't know why we have a red sphere. OK, this one looks pretty Negroni-like. But this one's a slightly better shape. I think we'll go with that one. Let's try and add a garnish on our cocktail stick. So I'm going to create a little ball. And let's say orange peel garnish on cocktail stick and see what happens. I have had a bit of success doing this in the past. OK, so this is sort of an idea of a dried slice. And then we've got 
mm, kind of a peel and then some kind of a whole orange. So I'm going to go, let's try, let's just try orange peel garnish take out the cocktail stick and see if we get any other options because we can always go back to the ones that have already been generated. Okay, this is a little bit more Negroni vibes. Okay, let's go for this one and then I think we'll just make it bigger because it is a little bit small. There we go. Okay, so now I can kind of see, okay, my, my Negroni color works with my orange peel garnish. And then in this bowl i think it would be nice to just have some more orange i mean negroni is just all about the sort of orange peel oils really let's say orange peel and again i'm not really expecting to get something precise but if i can get some sort of orange peel to see if is that distracting does it work what else could i put in the glass okay orange turmeric powder great but this one is quite good because I think dehydrated orange slices could be kind of fun. And then let's just see for fun how it does with an ice cube. Because sometimes I like to sort of sprinkle a bit of ice around my cocktails. Might be nice to have an ice cube. See how it looks. Maybe, maybe this one. I think the orange peels are just way too bright. But again, the point of this is not to create an image. It's to get ideas. So I'm happy with that. You know, I can see like, okay, my Negroni works. I like the color combination of the red with the slightly blue tinged backdrop. This is a really good way to see like if I had another backdrop that the red really clashed with, then I know that before I actually make a Negroni, get it on set and then go, oh, this doesn't work. Time to rethink. So that has saved me this whole piece of work. Okay, let's do the last one. So we've got this bright pink background with a cake stand. And I'm hoping we're gonna be able to insert some kind of cake. Let's go for a big cake. I mean, why not? So let's draw around and then we'll hit layer cake and generate. See what it comes up with. All right, I'm feeling this. So it's good for cakes. Okay, that one's kind of boring. This is fun. Oh, I like it with the raspberries. So if I was doing like a berry cake, that could work. Let's try adding some can. Oh no, let's add a sparkler. Oh, let's add a spark. Okay, let's see if they have one. Can I do it like this? Sparkler. See what happens. Oh, I love it. Oh, this is fun. Yes. Okay, let's do a slightly better shape for that because I think I just missed the middle. Or maybe actually, let's just do this. Because I really want to shoot a cake with sparklers, but I want to see like, does that work with this kind of color backdrop? Or, and like what kind of thing on top of the cake would work? Oh, that's an ugly one. Okay, we get the idea. This could work. Let's, let's just mask out that second, second stick because oh, we don't know why that's there. Ooh, well that's good. So we can now, we could just duplicate that and move it up here and rotate it so it's the other way. Okay, so now I can see how that would look with two sparklers and I really like it. I like the fun sort of party bright vibe that I get and I think on its own, that would have taken a lot of effort to do a test shoot for, but this just gives me so many options to try out new things without having to waste food, which I love. So yeah, I hope you guys have found this these tips useful. If you really wanted to create something using this tool, then you'd have to be very specific in what you were searching for and then do all kinds of adjustments, blending, clone stamping, masking, like to make it all work together. It's a real another level of editing and that's not what I'm using it for right now. I'm using it for idea generation. So I find this a really useful part of my workflow. As you can see, there's loads of different things that you can do. I hope you found this tip useful. You might try it out yourself. If you like this video, please hit subscribe and like it. It really helps out my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> so cut that bit out, please. <laughs>